are these people? But yeah, then there's the UN uh, HDR, <laughs> which again does a no shit thing. And I know Sabi covered this the other night. Israel has systematically yeah. violated laws regarding civilian harm, UN finds. <laughs> Six seemingly indiscriminate attacks likely carried out using U.S. provided bombs. Again, no surprise, you know, that we're funding a genocide that are attacking civilians directly and targeting civilians. Look at this. Oh. But it's okay because both sides of our duopoly support that, you know. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're going to vote for Trump or it doesn't matter if you're going to vote for Biden. At the end of the day, Apex is going to win. Oh, Apex already won. Actually, that was exactly the co the quote that I had when I when I was talking to, to Tara. I went on her show. She invited me on about two weeks ago. It was great. You know, I've been producing that show for two years, and yeah, you have. And uh, and I had never been a guest, so it was it was just interesting to kind of step on the other side and just <laughs> just kind of talk inside baseball. And you know, Tara's become a, right. a great friend, and and it was that was a lot of fun. And I appreciate her her supporting independent media, supporting INN. It's just. It was, oh, there's Shabby Sav sharing the stream right now. Look at that. I love you. Love you, Shabby. Um, Israeli forces we know have demonstrated a pattern of systematically targeting densely populated civilian areas across hundreds of attacks in Gaza that likely violate, likely violate international wartime laws. No, not likely. They do. They're human shields. Uh-huh. Well, though, they're not mm. shields if they're still murdering them. <laughs> Right. 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 But but uh, the Office of UN Ho High Commissioner for Refugees uh, found in a report released Wednesday, of course. Right. Monitoring by OHCHR strongly Ocher. indicates, Ocher. right? O Ocher, not OSHA, but Ocher, um, indicates that the is that the IDF or the IOF, as we all call them, the Israeli. I, what are they? They've always been the IDF in my entire life, and now they're the IOF. It's well, just like when they changed ISIS to ISIL. Like, well, we we changed that because they're not they don't defend very much. They're more an occupation force. So we okay, been okay, I get it. No, the you're Israeli right. The Israeli occupation okay. force, which is really what we call the IDF. That makes sense. They call them the IDF, and they get really mad when we call them the IOF. Um, okay, well, I'm going to make it a point to be calling them the IOF from here on. Oh out. yeah, it makes it makes them it makes Zionists really mad when you call them that because first of all, they don't really believe that they're occupiers. They don't want to come to that reality. It's it's amazing. Take a DNA test and tell me who's got more not, not native allowed. blood. No, that, I know, illegal. not allowed. It's illegal. <laughs> yeah. Right. But um, monitoring indicates that the IOF have systematically failed to comply with the following fundamental principles of international humanitarian law in its conduct of hostilities in Gaza since 7th of October. Now, before you can even say that, they're charged with the care of these people because they occupy them. So on top of international humanitarian law, there's literally like the Geneva Convention because you are occupying a people. Well, just like we took care of the Native Americans, come on. Right. Well, that we are literally the model that 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 Israel has used to take to yeah. to to deal with the Palestinians for seventy five years. And look, it's taken over two hundred years for the slow extermination of the Native American population here, unfortunately. And yeah. again, they're gonna they're gonna follow that model and dwindle it down and dwindle it down to this basically nobody left, and it's it's disgraceful. It's sad, and, it's, and they've accomplished a huge mission in the last uh, six months, seven months, you know, how many that they've exterminated off of and to not call it a genocide. I mean, some days when I go through my feed, Andy, I think they're worse than Nazis. It's making people run for their lives every day, wondering when the next bomb is coming. The kids are getting shell shocked. I mean, and, and unless you have this in your feed, you just, you're oblivious to it because they're not showing it to you anywhere else. And, I feel badly and I'm angry at the people that don't see any of this, but at the same time, I, know, I, right? I understand that they are being propagandized. They're being manipulated. And unless you seek this out and you're listening to people that are screaming about it, the corporate media is telling yeah. you to be mad about it. So a lot of people yeah. are, because that's what they listen to. And they listen to NPR. We know what NPR I is know. talking about. Oh. You know, so... You know, the principle of distinction, the prohibition of indiscriminate attacks, the principle of proportionality and the principle of precautions and attack. These attacks of an apparent indiscriminate nature are among hundreds of a similar nature, giving rise to the appearance, the appearance of a pattern of attacks over months. Uh huh. No, it's not an appearance. It is. 
It is, yeah. Um, right. So the analysis laid out six incidents carried out between October and December. That's just in, look at what they've done since then. All right. And said it were emblematic of their indiscriminate bombings. They targeted the attacks on densely populated areas, used weapons that arms experts in the UNHCR said should not be used on civilian neighborhoods due to the huge amount of collateral damage they cause. Yeah. But that's actually the plan, as we learned from the Where's Daddy and the Lavender AI program, where they're allowing soldiers up to 10 civilians per quote-unquote Hamas member that they're targeting, or they're letting him just follow that person home and target and blow up their generations of their family at the same time. Oh, insane. Oh, it's crazy. But according to the report, each attack either used, you know, these DBU-31, 32, or 39 bombs, which are 2,000, 1,000, and 250-pound bombs, respectively, falling on a child. <laughs> these are U.S.-made JDAMs manufactured by Boeing. By Boeing. So for all of you who've got your 401ks and they're wrapped up in these vanguards, you know what? You're supporting Boeing at the end of the day. We're supporting the military industrial complex and the making of these bombs that they're dropping on little children and their families. Yeah. Yeah. The incidents laid out by the UNHCR include the October 31st bombing of the Jabalia refugee camp in northern Gaza. Which was, bought, which was at that time the single worst attack carried out by Israel in its right. genocide. At least truth out is, is, you know, that's Mike Ludwig at truth out. He'll mention it. He's got no problem with that. The attack was carried out with at least four 30 GBU-32s or potentially GBU-31s and destroyed 10 buildings and damaged 10 more. Again, who's in those buildings? It's women yeah. and children mostly. Yep. Elderly. So there, well, the, there's not a lot of elderly left. Human shields. UNHCR verified at least 56 people killed in the incident. Other analyses, like the one by London war, war analyst Air Wars, have found that over 120 people, including 69 children, were killed in the strike, while hundreds of others were injured. Eh, no big deal, right? U.S. No, U.S. military. Well, now we need to call Boeing and replenish the bombs. That's. Literally, yeah, like, what the fuck is going on? That's the way on? we look at it. And that is why we've sent like, all of our old mun munitions to Ukraine and Israel. Yep. Hoping that they'll be duds because we need to replace them. And yep. we hey, can build we gotta, more, like Lindsey Graham says. We got to spend that $850 billion every year. Come on, it's got to go somewhere. Because otherwise, you can't <laughs> get $850 billion next year. Yep. Or 860 and keep pushing it higher and fucking higher every single year. Every time, yeah. It's, it's and the Democrats will sign off on it. Doesn't remember. Remember when Trump, his first year in office, the Democrats gave him a bigger defense bill than he asked for? It's on. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, Trump did that. And I think they did it for Biden, too. They, he asked for 850. They gave him 868 this year. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Right. So here's another one. Good measure. A, a December attack on uh, on on another place. Osh, I'm not even going to, to to butcher that. In Gaza City. And that's emblematic of the indiscriminate nature of their bombing campaign. Another dropping at least nine GBU-31s on the neighborhood. Those are the thousand-pound bombs, by the way. Then one of the most densely populated parts of Gaza. Nah, no big deal. The review found at least 60 Palestinians killed, while 15 buildings destroyed and 14 others damaged. This might have even been where we showed the drone footage. The Gray Zone had this incredible drone footage back in, in, the, in, in the late fall of some of the buildings overhead and what they looked like. And they were all homes destroyed. They weren't. Well, and that's the goal, too, not just to, uh, you know, genocide the Palestinian people, but to level Gaza so that way they can go in there. And, you know, they're selling the property already on, on the coast, like for condos and whatnot. Uh, I brought a woman a couple, yeah. like uh, six months ago, a Jewish woman who was like, oh, sure, I'll live there. You know, like we'll bulldoze right over them. We don't care. Yeah, they were actually selling the land in Teaneck, New Jersey. There, there was they were yeah, selling off. Yeah, in here in they're doing Toronto. they're doing seminars like freaking you know, like timeshare. Come on in. They do a whole you know weekend getaway thing. Right. So, but literally, like, and and the Kushners are involved also in selling. Yes. In selling yes. the land in over there. Um. And and yeah. So this is why when Trump go when Trump comes back in office, because I don't believe there's any way unless it's totally rigged. 
that the Democrats are going to hold office. Right, like, right. Drive down any street in America. Tell me how many Trump signs and tell me how many Biden signs you see anywhere. Like, there is no way. Like, at contra controversy, controversy. But now YouTube won't take you, take down your channel for saying, I, I don't trust any of the numbers anywhere coming from any election because Neither our either. system has been rigged since 2000 or before. But At least, I mean, when you go back, honestly, I think it's been rigged way before we were even born. I mean, but, you know, uh, yeah, absolutely. And here's the thing, the Democrats and the mainstream media, meaning MSNBS and those types, they're already laying the groundwork to make it look like it's possible that the American public just saw right through Trump and they decided at the last minute to come in and save the Democrats. And I, I've seen it for the last week or two. like. Um, you know, they're like, oh, the polls here, they could change and they could swing to Biden. You know, workers are going to vote for him. Like, so I see them laying out the groundwork to try to steal it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's a little scary what's what's happening with that. Um, but of course, <laughs> yeah, they, they always try to whitewash it. Always. Um, oh, always. But right, then they'll this... make a ton of money if Trump wins. So either way, they're good. Yeah, no, it's, we're we're screwed. And even if it's, even if Booby somehow pulls out any kind of miracle, and it's not going to be, but Booby. <laughs> but look, in, from hanging chads to the smart tech server in two thousand four, yeah. two thousand eight, everybody wanted it, and the CIA apparently wanted it too. So everybody got on board because they got the corporate media to sell you Obama. Citibank, that was Citibank that right, wanted Citibank it. Citibank and well, CIA too, I think. Goldman you know, Sachs, yeah. He, he implemented a lot of things in it. We're not going to look backward. We're only going to look forward. And <laughs> yeah, You're it was good at that, Andy. Well, thank you. And and then you know, and of course, Hillary Clinton with Pokemon <sighs> go to the polls and. And, and rigging that whole primary and, and still losing to a clown show game that. show yeah. host. And, and then of course, 2020, which is what caused me and probably, and it seems like you too, to, to say enough is enough and get and start doing media and becoming part yep. of the media because they suck so badly. Like I can so do this bad. better. I can do this better. Yeah. I've been watching these clowns do this forever. Like and, I can do it from my trailer park. Like, but, and, and I'm and I can do a better media. job than you. Not the yeah. independents. And I was inspired by the independents. The people like Convo Couch. The people like Richard Medhurst. Me the people like Lee yep. Camp. That have like, these, I, you know, I, I feel the same way. I say a lot of the same stuff. There's no reason that we can't at least get out there and scream it and add to that, to that list of voices that are out there screaming this stuff because there aren't enough of us. 100%. You know? So, no, there isn't enough. So the Israeli army, of course, claimed that they were targeting Hamas. But of course, as UNHCR points out, the mere presence of one commander or even several combatants does not render an entire neighborhood a military objective. Yes, collateral damage and, and civilian targets are a violation of international law yeah. to not make every attempt possible to avoid civilian deaths and military objectives. Yeah, they would say the same thing about Vladimir Putin, I'm sure. What do you mean yeah. Putin? Yeah. yeah, what about Putin? How many how many kids has Putin how many kids have died in Ukraine versus died in Gaza in the last eight Putin months? Putin is very thoughtful about uh, civilian casualties, and we've witnessed that multiple times in the decisions that he's made since 2014 when the UN and the CIA decided to go in there and park on his damn doorstep and coup uh Ukraine, you know. So yeah, I don't buy that. And I think that most Americans are so busy trying to stay alive that they don't have time to go get the information that we have, right? And, I mean, I didn't have it years ago. The only reason I have it now is because they got involved in politics and went, whoa, what the hell is going on? So, you know, yeah, independent media are, is so important because we get the truth out there. And so few of us still, you know, around, so, the, so few of the people around us are still plugged into independent media, uh, most of them are still watching Netflix. They're still watching the corporate I'm news guilty. shows. I'm fucking guilty. I watch you know? Netflix. And, and Netflix, Amazon. I mean, look, they're propagandizing you with their it's content propaganda. just as much. They're doing propaganda. Yeah. They're selling capitalism yep. and they're selling yep. the nine to five and the, the family structure and all the crap that, that we're trying to break away from. Because, look, we have very different lives now than than we did even 20 years ago. You know, everybody's got to work all the time, pretty much nonstop. All the time. Everybody in the house. 
Everybody and, in the house, not one person can go to work or two people. Every person has to be working full time to take care of themselves. And the binge watching of shows is, again, it's bread and circuses. They've been trying to keep us distracted, yeah. you know, too busy, too busy working. And then once you're busy working, you, you, once you're done working between taking care of the kids or grandkids and trying to find you five minutes to relax off. yourselves, you know, exactly. You want to turn it off. But the thing is, is the minute and I love, you know, this is Jesse Jet red pilled. I try to sit down with my wife, you know, uh, the wife, all I see is propaganda and the silly yep. sip, sitcom banter. And, um, and, and you know, Red Pill is, is the anthem that we close the show with. And I love that he played that in New York City. I think it was almost at my request. And, like he Me had too. to close it with that. Like you have to let New York City's audience and do dissonance's audience hear the passion and the anger that comes out of Red Pill. Even, and know that it came yes. four years ago and, and we still feel that way and worse. And it, it hasn't gotten any better. Like, like worse. Missed... worse. Yeah. You're right. I mean, we, we had some hope in 2016, right? We had Bernie Sanders and we had all these shills like Pramila Jayapal and AOC that were hyping us up that we were going to go inside that Democratic Party and we were going to start seeing some change that was going to affect the working class, whether it be Medicare for all or, you know, uh, there's so many things that we were fighting for. And look at us now oh my gosh did you see that uh bowman um rally this week in new york what they have 200 people 300 people there shout the, out the big, energy's gone inn's big mad crab had showed up showed up there and filmed uh with due dissidents and jose yep. got yeah the 200 300 people i've got the video of jose getting turned out i'm gonna run it tomorrow morning so you guys join me because i got a whole section on this tomorrow yeah they wouldn't let jose vega into the aoc bernie sanders jamal uh, bowman rally right and and we've been I'm seeing shit. yeah well they knew that he they, they've seen him how many times troll aoc they knew she was coming <laughs> i saw the video where yeah. he's trying to talk to the guy and the guy just straight up stonewalling him and not even answering and he yeah, knows he's, he's on why? camera <laughs> yeah, yeah. He knows he's the on video. Camera. It's like, it. what's he what's he gonna do uh yeah yeah sarah p also says that she was bird of your bunker working on the bunker uh still working on our bunker too but we are Bernie. Or, Bernie was the compromise. Like we keep telling you he that, was. and nobody he wants to hear that Bernie was the compromise. We knew he was shit to begin with, but all right, yes. he was at least saying the right stuff. They weren't going to go along with him, and they were going to fight him worse than they fought Trump. Can you imagine? Can you well, imagine what would have happened had Bernie he taken got over? Nothing done. Not only got nothing done, they would have blamed him for everything that went wrong. Everything. And he we would have been harder. There never would have gotten another, another lefty for a generation. Um, yep. You know, I, I think no, we right. still have a you're shot right. of a, a, and it, look, there's nobody coming to save us, but us, I don't think there's a dynamic leader that's emerging from the left. Nope. Um, they've splintered us. And my feeling is, is that anybody that emerges either gets co-opted, murdered, or they figure out a way to smear them and, and marginalize them with the corporate media and with the, the general public. So that they don't have to actually deal with them. So well, they I, want a civil war. I feel like they're they're setting the stage. That's what January six was. Look at these uh, crazy insurrectionists, and and now they're strumming it again. You know, and that if if say if somehow they manage to get the mob to fill out three hundred and fifty million ballots for Biden, because that's what the mob does. Uh, and he wins, then are the Trumpers Allegedly. going to take arms and freak out, right? That's what the Democrats want. I mean, you see De Niro out there freaking out every day. He's never going to leave. He's going to be a dictator. They're but I want to just remind... Yeah. <laughs> They're going to put us in camps. I just want to remind everybody, this is class warfare. Don't fight against your neighbor. You know, they they don't understand what's going on. It's like fighting, you know, somebody who is disabled. Like... If they don't understand and you do understand, it's imperative on you to make them understand when we get to that point. You know what I'm saying? I will not fight my neighbors. I will not fight a civil war for these morons. I just will no, not. No, no, please don't. By all, by all means, you know, they, they yeah, not, they're not even them. sending their own kids to, to die for you. So why exactly. should you send your kids to, to, to potentially go get maimed for them? Um. Like so, according to the analysis, as we said, eighty in eighty-seven percent of Israel's attacks, over five people have been killed, while ten or more have been killed in over sixty percent of their attacks. This this proportion alone suggests widespread war crimes. The report said. Meanwhile, the very use of those, what's those huge bombs in those densely populated areas, 
could amount to wartime violations, right? I want to see these motherfuckers brought up at the Hague. We're never yeah. going to see it. We're never going to see it. And I want to see no. Bush brought up to the Hague. I want to see Obama brought up at the Hague. I want to see every single one of them dragged in front for war crimes. But we know what's going to happen. The Hague Act in 2003 Bush said they'll bomb the Hague before they go put anybody before them. Yeah, right. He wasn't right? joking either. No, he wasn't. Yeah. And they reinforced it. And everybody shit their pants this year. And it was like, guys, we did this 20 years ago. What are we doing? Everything that's old is new again, I guess. Right? Yeah, I guess. So the launching of such bombs in this way could indicate direct attacks on civilians. Could? <sighs> I mean, the hedging in this report is so gross. Meanwhile, meanwhile... At the back of the Hall of Justice, no, the yeah. injustice, Israeli officials have been clear about their, object, their objectives. As the report points out, IOF officials, Major, Major General Hassan Alian, referred to Hamas and the residents of Gaza as quote-unquote human beasts and told them, you wanted hell, you will get hell. We're breaking out of the prison that we put you in. Uh-huh. The report quoted another IOF spokesperson, saying at the beginning of Israel's current incursion into Gaza that they're focused on what causes maximum damage. Yeah. We're not shocked. We know that. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the thing. They're, they're trying to raise at, at truth out $13,000. They're a nonprofit. It's tax deductible. If you have any money, these guys do excellent work that I, I got to say that, you know, they are any media award honorees. Uh, so we'll clean the sound. They they do get a little shit libby. I will be the first to admit they have they have some <laughs> shit lib tendencies. It no happens. shit libbiness. It happens. Uh. There it, there are some shit lib tendencies to truth out. They are, but they are one of the few outlets that are out there that regularly puts out content that is in favor of again countering and questioning Democrats from the left. Uh, they also right. champion and say. AOC strongly urges by the administration to blah blah blah. That is my the the article that I hate the worst is the the strong urging or the the deep requesting and like they have a whole series of language to to try to describe yeah. this this begging <laughs> basically it's begging for scraps, right? Oh yes, thank you, Gregory Walker. The, he's he's quoting Red Pill. Sometimes I like it better being blind. Uh, he's quoting Jesse's beginning of Red Pill. Right, exactly. It is, you know, since we were talking about this, you know, Israel uh, airstruck uh, UNRWA's headquarters in Gaza today and fucking leveled it. How is that not a war crime? It I is. Mean, it it the, is. It's for the whole world to see. It's clear to see. And yet, no, not a war crime. It's going to have to be BRICS and China. And it's going to have to be. Well, and what does that look like, Indy? What is that? Does that look like a conflict first? And then what's left of the populations will come together and they'll have some kind of tribunal for the acts that were done, say, after whatever a conflict or war is going to happen? I mean, well, I, I mean, what's going to be le look, I, we need what's to, to be left. We need to have a tribunal now about what's happening so that a we put it in the record that this is what they did and. Just like Nuremberg, we need another yeah. Nuremberg trials here because of what's been happening here now over the course of eight months where they're saying they're going to continue doing this into 2025 already. We're going to be voting for a president that's going to be funding this, that's going to be furthering this. Yeah. Um, if Seth Rich never got murdered, can you imagine? Oh, my goodness, oh. Gregory. My gosh, oh. Seth Rich! You guys don't even get me started on Seth Rich. I was thinking the anniversary of that was uh, sometime re very recently. And normally, I always bring it up. You know, I was a delegate just like Seth was in 2016 for Bernie Sanders, and we knew, we knew instantly when we found out. I'll, I'll never forget where I was when I heard it come across the radio that a DNC staffer who handled data had been uh, executed basically execution style on you know in dc and of course oh no it's a robbery and all the crazy stuff that we've heard but nobody nobody really you know talks about the sacrifice that seth rich made to give us the truth of what the democratic party was doing we knew it from the inside we could see it we knew what they were doing to us but he, mm -hmm. we finally had the proof right and then julian assange uh we just keep fighting for assange of course his uh hearing his uh appeal to uh, not be extradited is going to be the July 9th and 10th. Right. So we'll be watching the royal courts for that. Yep. 
we'll probably be covering that live here on INN. We've covered we covered the last one uh, live, and as long as we can pipe into somebody, Amber was feed, there. Amber did go. Amber went. Amber, she it went. It was so I know. awesome. How yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and Sleepy Josh, and we hooked up some kind of thing. I know he was helping her kind of do some stuff. Yeah. Uh, that, oh, that yeah. Was great. Sleepy helps Amber do all kinds of stuff behind the scenes. Shout out to Sleepy. Um, we appreciate it. Uh, last Monday, we did an INN for Palestine group live stream. Uh, me with Himbo, uh, Big Bad Crab, and uh, an Angel in the Afternoon, Angel Rivera. And we talked about a couple of uh, of the news stories that were happening that day. And, like, we were like, we could literally do this every day or every week and have a live stream talking about this. We also talked about the video. Um, I think you brought it to trailer park pundit of the woman who got kicked out of or who got blocked by her rabbi on social media. Yes. I brought okay. that to media and the boomer the yeah. other night. Yeah. Yep. yep. Uh, yeah. So we, we talked about that uh, on this stream. So if you want to check that out uh, on INN, you can certainly check that out. 